right friends welcome back to lecture this is 48th week from 23rd to 29th november let us look at the highlights prime minister's visit to singapore southeast asian island nation and the prime minister emphasized on oceans space and cyber world should be avenues of prosperity the other important aspect is india and singapore entered into strategic partnership by elections to two lok sabha seats trs elated with the victory in warangal and setback for bjp that is due to the loss in ratlam jabhua parliamentary constituency in madhya pradesh next one around the world russian war plane was shot down by turkish fighter jet with air to air missile it created a lot of commotion across the world Russia is a fuming and the scenario in Syria we are going to discuss a little bit in this lecture part and about the Syria crisis in news analysis of this week then trial of war crimes death penalty is being imposed on several persons who committed war crimes in the year 1971 after 44 years does this lead to breeding of uh, islamic state in bangladesh we are going to discuss this then person of indian origin became the prime minister of portugal then uh, mauricio macri became the new president of argentina two day commonwealth summit was held in malta then if you look at economy and banking finance minister meets uh, chief executives of public sector banks worried over increase in non performing assets then if you look at the miscellaneous events uh, 2015 is recorded as the hottest year ever as per the geneva based world meteorological organization report this assumed significance in view of the climate summit which is being held in paris Right friends look at the first issue the prime minister's visit to singapore singapore is a island nation one main island and along with the small islets islet is nothing but a small island and singapore consists of one main island one side is malaysia the other side is indonesia so this singapore is having around 700 square kilometers of area with around a population of around 55 lakhs almost equal to the population of pune in our country and the gdp is 300 billion dollars one seventh of our gdp population is just 55 lakhs and gdp is almost 300 billion dollars one seventh of our gdp and it got independence from united kingdom in 1963 subsequently merged with malaysia and got separated from malaysia in the year 1965 and the phenomenal growth is a lesson for any country to learn from singapore and i would like to tell you a few points for singapore one side it is indian ocean the other side it is south china sea you can say it is the meeting point of indian ocean as well as south china sea and second important point is it is separated from malaysia by johor strait please look into this picture it is separated from malaysia by johor strait so these are the important points when you look at singapore corruption free government not only that discipline work culture these are the things which everyone in the world can learn from singapore prime minister went to singapore and prime minister delivered the singapore lecture 37th singapore lecture and here the prime minister emphasized one important point oceans space and cyber world should not become new theater of contests 
and they should become the avenues of shared prosperity why the prime minister stressed on these three issues one is oceans why he emphasized is there are several disputes with regard to south china sea and east china sea there are several disputes with regard to several islands and keeping that in view the prime minister emphasized that uh, this oceans uh, should not become new theater of conflicts second important point is the uh, space why he mentioned air space is uh, because of uh, conflicts going on across the world especially ukrainian air space and several incidents occurred in these areas that's why the prime minister mentioned about air space air space should not become the theater of contest third one is the cyber world in recent times hacking of records and stolen the secret information took place in several countries and the prime minister rightly emphasized that these three that is oceans then air space and cyber space should not become the theater of contests and the prime minister also mentioned that india is ready to work with the countries in the region and beyond including united states of america and russia to realize the goal of prosperous nations right so look into the next one in view of the prime minister's visit India and Singapore signed 10 bilateral agreements not only that India and Singapore signed joint declaration for strategic partnership what is the meaning of strategic partnership strategic partnership the main meaning is to help each other or working together to make it easier for each of them to achieve the goal and both the countries signed joint declaration for strategic partnership and strategic partnership will encompass new year areas of cooperation in defense sector economic people to people contacts political sphere and in security aspects so these are the aspects which prime minister emphasized when he visited singapore so coming back to the issues in our country by elections were held two lok sabha constituencies one is situated in telangana region that is the varangal telangana rashtra samiti retained the seat with increased margin all the other candidates lost their deposits telangana rashtra samiti is elated by the result of varangal lok sabha seat but setback for bjp when it lost this ratlam jabuwa lok sabha seat congress candidate kantilal bhuria defeated bjp candidate by over 88000 votes that is a real setback for bjp in madhya pradesh and if you look at assembly elections bjp as usual retained devas assembly seat in madhya pradesh and bjp must be elated with the result of two assembly seats in manipur legislative assembly when its candidates entering manipur assembly so bjp won both the assembly seats and it opened its account in manipur legislative assembly in meghalaya the assembly seat was won by hspdp hspdp is a hill state people's democratic party in mizoram aizwal north three seat was won by indian national congress so these are the results of uh, by elections here trs must be elated with the election result of varangal but for bjp it gave mixed results because it lost this ratlam jabwa seat but it entered manipur legislative assembly by winning two seats right friends the most unfortunate event which may further escalate tensions in syria occurred when turkish fighter jet f16 shot down sukhoi su24 that is the russian war plane with an air to air missile turkey says that this fighter jet 
strayed into their airspace but russia says they are well within syrian airspace whatever it is both the countries are fighting common enemy islamic state but this type of uh, incidents like attacking each other is not good and it will ultimately benefit the islamic state so russian president says that it is a stab in the back and turkey says it shot down after repeated warnings so whatever the reason but there are several unanswered question please look into this slide does the violation of air space for 17 seconds requires the shooting down by f16 or turkey and greece turkey and greece are neighboring countries are they not violating each other's air space is it the way of fighting common enemy islamic state the second important aspect is does it not strengthen the hands of isis as the two groups of countries one led by united states and the other led by russia are fighting each other instead of fighting isis the other important aspect is can turkey get absolved of the following accusations there are several accusations oil trade with isis by several turkish nationals in fact moscow accused turkey government itself with regard to the oil trade with isis wild accusations were made by russia on isis second important point is the borders syria and turkey have got long border the borders were kept open Russia alleged that these borders are kept open only to support the flow of arms to ISIS then there were allegations that more focus by Turkey on fighting Kurds than ISIS because Kurds want independence from Turkey which is not palatable for Turkey next Turkey is a member of NATO what is the response of NATO then can us coalition destroy isis only with air strikes without the support of syrian president so the internal bickering of these countries is making isis stronger but the pertinent question 22 millions of syrians are asking the world community is are you working with the humanitarian concerns or riddled with the sectarian politics the world at present has got no answer If you look at the scenario in Syria one group is led by the president Bashar al-Assad supported by Vladimir Putin and supported by Iran this is one block the other block is moderate rebels supported by United States of America as well as France and UK along with the Saudi Arabia and its friends so this is a second block and both are fighting ISIS independently and this is leading to anarchy in the state that's why 4 million people left the state and 7 million people are internally displaced so the world has got no answer at present to the syrian nationals right friends look at the next one trial of war crimes in bangladesh does it not lead to proliferation of isis all of you are well aware bangladesh liberation war took place for 9 months in the year 1971 now bangladesh then it was known as east pakistan wanted to separate from pakistan and bangladesh liberation war took place for 9 months and at that time with the help of pakistan army some pro pakistan militants in bangladesh committed several atrocities which resulted in death of 3 million people not only that thousands of women were raped and international crimes tribunal was set up in 2010 after 39 years and now several people are being convicted to death penalty and the united nations organ office of the high commissioner for human rights also took exception to this and death penalty after 44 years is being questioned by several people across the world including united nations are gone so the world fears that it may lead to radicalization in bangladesh that is 
proliferation of Islamic State militants may take place in Bangladesh as felt in some quarters. And in fact, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights advised the Bangladesh government to stop death penalty at this late stage. Person of Indian origin, that is Antonio Costa, became the Prime Minister of Portugal. Antonio Costa's grandfather hails from Goa in India and Antonio Costa was the mayor of a Lisbon city for eight years from 2007 to 2015 and he transformed that city and he was nicknamed Gandhi of Portugal. He is the leader of a Portuguese Socialist Party and now he got elected as the Prime Minister of Portugal and his policies aim at sustainable reduction of fiscal deficits and debts and people of Portugal are expecting the same transformation which he had done in Lisbon city. So, let us give best wishes to Antonio Costa who traces his paternal roots to Goa in India. Look at the next one. Another socialist country or socialist policies are in problems that is Argentina. In Argentina, Cristina Fernandez and her husband ruled the country for almost 12 years from 2003 to 2015 and they followed socialist policies and deregulation of several industries and several entities was done in 1990s and subsequently economy meltdown happened somewhere around 2001 and from 2003 onwards up to 2015 Cristina Fernandez and her husband squarely followed the socialistic pattern of society or you can say socialistic pattern of government and due to the fall in commodities prices the government's expenditure driven model of governance failed and Argentina is in problems for the past few years and if you look at the facts pertaining to Argentina GDP is almost stagnant for the past four years. Inflation is around 25 percent. Fiscal deficit is at 6 percent and actual statistics of foreign exchange figures and fiscal deficit figures are not being revealed by the government. But overall government is into problems and at the same time in the year 2016 economy is going to contract by around 1.1 percent. So, this is the case of a failure of another socialistic pattern of governance and people finally gave vote for development plank of Mauricio Macri and the failure of the socialistic pattern of governance in this country is a big lesson to several other governments and at the same time please don't forget because of a fall in oil prices Venezuela is also into problems and we are going to discuss about Venezuela next week so the success of development plank over socialistic plank shows that nothing is permanent in the governance and governments have to modify their action plans depending on the developments across the world right friends so this is about argentina and it is in trouble with inflation at around 25 percent look at the next issue today commonwealth summit at malta where is malta malta is island country you can say archipelago it is a group of several islands and this Malta is a part of European Union. Not only that, it is a Eurozone country and Chogam Summit, that is a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. This is the 24th meeting, please don't forget. And this meeting is supposed to be held in Mauritius this year. 2013-23 Chogam was held in Sri Lanka. And 
Now it is held in Malta and in 2018 next summit that is 25th summit is going to be held in UK and here what is the chogam this is a commonwealth heads of government meeting one thing everyone should not forget this a commonwealth heads of government meeting constitutes a 53 countries in commonwealth Commonwealth means most of the countries were governed by British in olden days. That means most of these nations were British colonies in good olden days, and at the same time, some of them are governed by British. But overall, if you see, these fifty-three countries have got some connection with the British. So, out of these fifty-three countries, thirty-two countries are republics. India is one of them. Sixteen countries with the British Queen as a monarch, and five have their own monarch. So, these fifty-three countries, part of Commonwealth, meet once in two years. But the next one is going to be held in two thousand eighteen. That is twenty-fifth summit, and Commonwealth heads of government meet normally once in two years, and. Queen Elizabeth II opened this summit at Malta, and Sri Lanka, India, Maldives, Mauritius. One important development is Sri Lanka, India, Maldives, Mauritius signed Declaration of Intent to establish Commonwealth Trade Finance Facility. Commonwealth Trade Finance Facility to boost trade and investment flows. This is the one development. and the meet focused on terrorism refugee crisis and climate change the other important point i would like to tell you is the chair in office will be handed over to the host country as the host country is the malta this year the chair in office was handed over by maithripala sirisena sri lankan president to maltese prime minister joseph muscat because in sri lanka this chogam 23 was held in 2013 and now it is held in malta so now the chair in office will go to the host country the host country is malta that's why maltese prime minister will be now chair in office right friends so here one important development is this four countries sri lanka india maldives and mauritius signed declaration of intent to establish commonwealth trade finance facility right friends if you look at the events pertaining to economy and banking Finance Minister meets the chief executives of public sector banks. He reviewed the financial performance of these public sector banks for quarter two. Please don't forget the financial year starts on April one and ends on March thirty first. And the second quarter, second quarter pertains to July to September. Second quarter performance of public sector banks was reviewed by the finance minister Arun Jaitley because these public sector banks are under the Ministry of Finance. Department of Financial Services looks at the affairs of banking system. Please don't forget, Department of Financial Services, Ministry of Finance looks at the affairs of the banking system. as such finance minister reviews the performance once in 3 months and what are the biggest problems faced by the public sector banks the first and the foremost biggest problem is nps raise in gross nps is the biggest problem gross nps for public sector banks touched 6% that is the alarming situation second important point is casa ratio is falling for public sector banks except state bank of india this is another worrying factor 
casa deposits or a savings account and current account deposits these are low cost deposits for the banking system and for the profitability of the banks these are essential but unfortunately these deposits are falling down the third important point is the credit of take is not satisfactory credit of take is lingering at around 10% for the past 2 years credit of take is normally 2 and up to 3 times the gdp gdp is growing at around 7% but credit of take is supposed to be around 18 to 20% but unfortunately credit of take is around 10% so these are the problems faced by the public sector banks and the finance minister stated that the problem of unacceptable level of nps is due to the pressures of the past and he also stated banks have sufficient powers to tackle the bad loans but whatever his impression overall the situation in the banking system especially for public sector banks is alarming and please don't forget for capital infusion government of india is giving 70000 crores of rupees over four years period starting from this financial year of 2015 16 right up to 2018 19 25000 crores this financial year next financial year another 25000 crores followed by 10000 crores each during the successive financial years right friends so this is the scenario of uh, public sector banks if someone asks you what are the problems faced by public sector banks the first and the foremost problem is gross nps at around 6% second problem is credit of take is not on the expected lines third is casa ratio is falling so these are the major drawbacks of these public sector banks under this scenario the finance minister discussed with the chiefs of public sector banks Look at the next one, 2015, the hottest year ever. The World Meteorological Organization. You may ask, what is World Meteorological Organization? World Meteorological Organization is United Nations Specialized Agency, and it became specialized agency in the year 1951, and it traced its origin. to international meteorological organization which was established in 1873 itself and its name got changed to world meteorological organization world meteorological organization is a united nations specialized agency and headquarters please don't forget is in geneva switzerland and 23rd march is observed as world meteorological day this is about world meteorological organization and what it said recently alarming situation 2015 is the hottest year ever in the world history in the world history 2015 is the hottest year second is the global temperatures likely to reach 1 degree centigrade above pre industrial levels pre industrial levels means uh, the cut off year was 1750 prior to 1750 there was no industrialization industrialization basically started subsequent to 1750 because of invention of a steam engine and because of industrialization lot of carbon dioxide is being released into the atmosphere because of a burning of coal due to which the temperatures are rising because carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas it traps heat in the atmosphere and when compared to pre industrial levels now the temperature is likely to increase by 1 degree centigrade that means it is likely to touch increase of 1 degree centigrade it is increasing once the industrialization started somewhere around 1800s and now the increase reached a level of 1 degree centigrade when we compare it with the pre industrial levels and please don't forget now the climate summit is going on at paris and the goal is to limit it to 2 degree centigrade when we compare it with the pre industrial levels right friends so Another startling revelation is period 2011 to 2015 is said to be the warmest 5 year period on record. 
and October 2015 was the warmest month on record and this information must be an eye opener for the people who ever are discussing this climate summit talks in Paris right friends with this let us conclude the Today's lecture, please do listen to news analysis and features we are discussing about the Syria crisis. Right friends, have a nice day. Thank you.